Birding the Palm Beaches is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Check out the palmbeaches.tv to learn more. On this episode of Birding the Palm Beaches, we're going to explore some of the very best birding locations in Palm Beach County and find some of the special and unique birds that call Palm Beach County home. Let's go, birding the Palm Beaches. Palm Beach County is one of the largest and most eco-diverse counties in all of Florida and the Palm Beaches are a paradise of never-ending outdoor activities and things to do and see. An unmatched landscape of first-rate birding, incredible wildlife management areas, year-round fishing, a multitude of water sports and exceptional beaches make this the best place to experience Florida. From the Everglades to the Atlantic Ocean, you are sure to find things to do that will stoke your passions and make lasting memories. Here in the Palm Beaches, birding and wildlife viewing is a big deal, even bigger than you might imagine. In fact, birding is second only to beach-related activities as a form of outdoor recreation for both visitors and residents. If you're already into birding, you probably know that Florida and Palm Beach County is considered one of the best places in the world for this activity. South Florida is a birding mecca from the colorful and distinctive natural populations of wading birds to the specialties like Florida scrub jays and red cockaded woodpeckers combined with the winter migration of flocks from up north. Palm Beach County is truly a bird watcher's paradise. Right on the county line in northern Palm Beach County is without doubt the very best site to see Florida's only endemic bird, the Florida scrub jay. People come from all over the country to tick this bird off their life list. The Florida scrub jay is a cooperative bird with offspring from the previous year staying together with the parents to help raise the next brood of young. They are incredibly intelligent birds, member of the corvid family, and they're spectacular to watch. In some parts of Florida, these birds become very tame, so much so that they'll come and actually sit on your shoulder or perch on your head. Florida scrub jays used to be lumped with the other scrub jays in North America, the island scrub jay and the western scrub jay as one super species. But recently, it's been found that the Florida scrub jay is very genetically different from the other two species of scrub jays. Florida scrub jays require a very specific habitat type, this low scrub oak that they live in in parts of Palm Beach County. Unfortunately, scrub oak is a very dwindling habitat type, especially in the coastal areas where Florida scrub jays like to live. And if you want to check this bird off your life list, the best place to do it is in Jonathan Dickinson State Park, right on the county line between Palm Beach County and Martin County. And now we're going to head out west in search of a very endangered bird. In fact, the most endangered woodpecker in all of North America, the red cockaded woodpecker. This morning, we're at Dupuy Wildlife Management Area 
in northwestern Palm Beach County. And this is the only place in all of Palm Beach County to search for the red cockaded woodpecker. Red cockaded woodpeckers live in pine flatwoods and it's these pine trees that are critical to the survival of red cockaded woodpeckers in the southern states of North America. The critical secret to getting these red cockaded woodpeckers is to be here really early in the morning and search for the trees that are banded and that have these metal rings around them because this is where the red cockaded woodpeckers like to roost up for the night. Oh, there he is poking his head out, poking his head out of the nesting hole. This is typical of what they'll do in the morning. They'll kind of stick their head out, it's a little bit misty, and they'll poke their head out, make sure there's no danger around, and then they'll pop out of that hole. And the whole group that live cooperatively in these little groups together will then start making their appearances out of their holes, and they'll go off foraging for the day. You know, these red cockaded woodpecker numbers have plummeted over the last sort of 40 or 50 years. They used to be very common all over the southern states of the United States. And right now, they're only limited to a few states in the south. Florida, Georgia, a few places like Alabama as well, where these pine flatwoods are still preserved. You'll be able to find North America's most endangered woodpecker, the red cockaded woodpecker. Stay tuned for more Birding the Palm Beaches. Birds of a feather flock together in the Palm Beaches. Big birds, little birds, pink birds, blue birds. The Palm Beaches is one of the best birding spots in the country. Discover the Palm Beaches and experience one of America's top birding destinations. Man, this is Palm Beach right here. Sailfish capital of the world for sure. There we go, there we go, bring them in. All right! This is an incredibly rich area, and it's just a couple of miles offshore. Selfish here. Woo! Look at that. There he comes up. Woo! Look at that. Some of the best game fishing that you can have in the entire world. Birding the Palm Beaches is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Check out the palmbeaches.tv to learn more. The Great Florida Birding Trail snakes its way through some of the very best birding sites throughout the state. But some incredible birding sites are right here in Palm Beach County. Just look out for the Great Florida Birding Trail signs all across the county. Green Cay Wetlands, situated right in the heart of Boynton Beach in Palm Beach County, is arguably the best bird photography site in all of the United States. Green Cay allows you to get within feet of wading birds, waterfowl, and other bird species, providing spectacular photographic opportunities. Green Cay, on any given day, is loaded with bird photographers, birders, and people who just come out here to enjoy the outdoors. 
It's a spectacular place. We have great opportunities to see black-bellied whistling ducks, the odd fulvous whistling duck, and then of course the beautiful roseate spoonbills that will come here, and occasionally a peregrine falcon or a merlin will take up residence here too, taking advantage of the bounty of bird life that exists here at Green Cay Wetlands. One of the fantastic things about Green Cay Wetlands is that every single time I come here, I see something unique and something different. I don't know of any other places in the United States where you can get within six feet of American Bittens and they don't even care that you're around. It's absolutely fascinating that they're just behaving like normal American Bittens, but literally right at your feet. They saw a bobcat up by the entrance. There's a bobcat at the entrance? Well, we've got a bobcat at the entrance. Let's go find it. Thank you so much. Oh, wow, there it is. It's just on the edge of that woodland there. It looks like a young bobcat. Just moving to the bushes right here. Very cool. Palm Beach County's proximity to the Caribbean means that every so often, rare birds fly off course and end up here in Palm Beach County. Right outside the entrance to Green Cay Wetlands, we've got a Lasagras flycatcher in these little trees, just flitting around, grabbing insects, and it's been here for a couple of days already. This is a bird that can be commonly seen in the Caribbean islands, but only very seldom does it make its way onto the mainland in Florida. Situated just down the road from Green Cay is another very productive urban wetland called Wakodahatchee. It has many of the same species found at Green Cay, but what's really the attraction here is the number of nesting wading birds in winter. Huge numbers of woodstalk, great blue heron, little blue heron, snowy egrets, and anhingas will utilize the trees in Wakodahatchee to bring up their young. Wakodahatchee and Green Cay truly are some of the best birding sites in beautiful Palm Beach County. There's a gentler side of Florida, just waiting for you to discover it. Where America's first resort destination was built and genuine hospitality began. A place with cleaner sands, warmer waters, and fewer crowds. A place different than the rest. One that exceeds, excels, and surpasses all expectation. Waiting here just for you. We are the original, the one, the only, the Palm Beaches. Another really important consideration when photographing or getting close to birds and wildlife on the water is stability. You can see I've got my scope set up right here and my camera equipment. It's really, really stable and I'm able to lock down on my subject and get some great, great images. And then for those occasions where you need increased elevation, these sit on top kayaks are really easy to stand up. They're very, very stable. All I do is I put my seat back, just like that. I can stand on the deck pad over here, use this, the back of the seat as stability, and then I can look with my binoculars at a bird over the riverbank, or pick up my point and shoot camera and take some wonderful clicks. Very, very stable, and you're not losing any equipment on a Hobie Pro Angler sit on top kayak. Birding the Palm Beaches is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Check out thepalmbeaches.tv to learn more. Another iconic bird is the Florida subspecies of the crested caracara. And the very best place to find these birds is in the western communities of Palm Beach County. <music> 
you want to find crested taracaras in Florida, the best thing to do is to find a rural road around Lake Okeechobee or in South Central Florida and drive the road and look especially along low fence posts and caracaras like to use those fence posts as vantage points and they'll sit there and they'll often watch for vultures circling and see when vultures go down on a carcass that will be a good indicator for them but they'll also use fence posts and lamp posts to scan for dead animals especially along the roadsides and so the best tactic is just drive along these rural roads and then look very carefully on any kind of prominent fence post or vantage point that they can hunt from and you won't miss a crested caracara when you see one they're very distinctive looking that beautiful crest it's the largest of all the caracara species in the world and i've been very privileged to see many of the smaller species in central and southern america but there's nothing like coming home and finding your own special caracara in your backyard you know if you do research on crested caracaras in florida you know the figures will vary from anything from 300 to about 500 birds in the entire state but on the western edge of palm beach county and henry county you can drive along these roads here and see 20 30 caracaras in a single day so they really are doing quite well here and this is probably the most southern edge of their range Yes, this is amazing. We've got two baby crested caracaras in the nest and they're probably about four to five weeks old, I would imagine. Normally, crested caracara nests are incredibly well hidden. These adult crested caracaras are feeding the voracious appetites of these young babies several times a day. And quite incredible how short the fledging period is of these birds only about eight weeks until the chicks will actually leave the nest. What a wonderful opportunity to spend some time with one of Florida's rare and iconic birds, the crested caracara. These babies are growing quickly and I'm excited to come back to witness the progress of these youngsters as they get ready to fledge from the nest. The crested caracara or Mexican eagle, another bird that calls the Palm Beaches home. Birds of a feather flock together in the palm beaches. Big birds, little birds, pink birds, blue birds. The palm beaches is one of the best birding spots in the country. Discover the palm beaches and experience one of America's top birding destinations. My name is Mark Cook. I'm a avian ecologist for the South Florida Water Management District and we're going to fly out in this helicopter here, Bell 407, and we're going to fly out over the Everglades. We're going to look to see where the birds are foraging so we can get a handle on how we can manage the system this week. And then we're going to fly down to a whole bunch of different wading bird colonies and, and just check up on them, see how they're doing in terms of their, where they are in the breeding cycle. Are they nesting? Are they on eggs? Are they on chicks? and just basically find out sort of what kind of conditions some of these birds are in. First of all, we're going to be flying over the Loxahatchee National Wildlife Refuge. That's sort of characterized by lots of small pop-up tree islands. And these tree islands are the biodiversity hotspots of the Everglades. That's where all the birds nest. That's where you get multiple species of plants and trees. It's where the, everything nests pretty much. The alligators, the snakes, the amphibians, thousands of species of invertebrates. So real biodiversity hotspots of the Everglades and absolutely essential for most of the critters in the Everglades. So, you know, that's where all the birds are nesting. And then we're going to be flying into Water Conservation Area 3A. That's where we have the largest wading bird colony in the Everglades. It's a colony called Alley North, north of the Alligator Alley, the big road that runs across the Everglades. That's about a mile long, about a third of a mile wide, 
and right now it is a host to probably 10 to 15,000 white ibis plus another three or 4,000 great egrets and other species as well. So that colony is really booming just at, right at this moment. Everything's starting to nest and really very active. Then the next step is to fly all the way to the southwest corner of Water Conservation Area 3A, right on the border of Big Cypress National Preserve. And there we'll be looking at two woodstalk colonies. Those colonies are supporting in total about a thousand woodstalk nests right now. So this year is doing really great for the woodstalk. We've had perfect conditions for them. We had a really wet summer and that's critical because it enables the water to spread all over the Everglades and a lot of the other wetlands that are surrounding the Everglades, that those wet conditions are essential for growing the fish that the birds will require during the nesting period. So for the last year we've been growing all this fish across the landscape and now what we're looking for is these really nice dry conditions. We're in the dry season now so we don't want any major rain events. We want a nice dry down where the water levels drop across the landscape, the aerial surface of the water shrinks in the Everglades. And that, what that does is the fish all congregate and become concentrated in these small pools of water. And that's what the birds require to feed on those fish. They need really high densities of prey. And the reason is, is because they're tactile foragers. The white ibis and the woodstalk are tactile foragers. They feed by touch. They don't feed by sight. They put their bill in the water and move it around and they have a really quick reaction time. The woodstalk has the fastest reflex of, we think of any vertebrate animal, 25 milliseconds it takes for the bill to snap shut, which is far faster than the response of the fish. But because of the method by which they forage, they require these high densities of prey. And that's what's happening right now. We've got a great dry down of the Everglades. The fish are all becoming concentrated and that's why we're seeing these huge big flocks right now of woodstalks and ibis and other species. Now the woodstalk and the white ibis are, are some of our key indicator species both for restoring the Everglades and for water management, for guiding water management and that, where to put water, where not to put water etc. And the reason for that is because they are such specialist foragers and so they're very reflective of the health of the prey species and are characteristic of the conditions that were historically in the Everglades. So they're really useful for guiding water management and for guiding how we need to restore the system for future restoration. This putt to win the U.S. Open. Man, would you be quiet I'm trying to putt in peace? You missed it. I knew you'd miss it. Big deal, man. We're going to miss our flight. Let's go. Birding the Palm Beaches is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Check out the palmbeaches.tv to learn more. Another amazing bird that calls the Palm Beaches home is the enigmatic swallow-tailed kite, one of the most graceful raptors in the entire world. Palm Beach County is chock full of natural areas and every spring countless swallowtail kites return from their wintering grounds in Central and South America to take advantage of this bountiful beauty. There are four species of kite that can be found in the United States and all four of them can be found here in Palm Beach County. The Mississippi kite, the white-tailed kite, the swallow-tailed kite, and of course, the aquatic snail kite.
Well, the swallowtail kites are back in huge numbers this year in Palm Beach County. And they have this amazing routine every single day. In the mornings, they wake up right at sunrise and they start stretching those wings and they do this almost like this vampire display where they dry out those wings from the dew of the night before. And then they stretch and get ready and they flap their wings getting ready to fly and go on their aerial missions in quest of insects. And then you'll see them take off in the morning. They'll wait for those thermals as the ground heats up around 9, 9.30 in the morning. Then they'll take off, get into those thermals, maybe take a quick drink of water from a canal or a water source. And then they'll ride those thermals all the way up to their hunting grounds where they'll spend the rest of the day looking for insects. And come evening time or late afternoon, they'll fly back to the roost site, maybe on the way, grabbing a quick insect or a last meal before nighttime. And they'll roost in these numbers right at the top of cypress trees where they're safe from predators. Wow, they're such handsome kites. Beautiful, subtle coloration. Really handsome markings and just beautiful with that lovely forked tail. Swallowtailed kites are amongst the most acrobatic of birds. That stunning tail just fans out when they're flying and they're able to do these amazing circles and swoops and dives, very acrobatic and using that tail as a rudder and a stabilization. Absolutely amazing acrobatic aerial predators. One of the interesting aspects of the swallowtailed kite's life history is that unlike other raptors, they don't prey on rodents or reptiles or other birds, but more specifically, they prey on insects and they'll fly and gather those insects on the wing, often transferring them to their talons and then they'll eat them right on the wing. The swallowtailed kite, just another enigmatic and incredibly beautiful bird that can be found right here in the Palm Beaches. Another bird that can be easily checked off your list resides in a very unusual place in Palm Beach County that makes it accessible for even the most novice of birders. The Florida Atlantic University campus is one of the few places in Palm Beach County that you can see the enigmatic and tiny burrowing owl. These diminutive small little owls are widespread throughout South America, Central America and North America and there are more than a dozen different subspecies of burrowing owls. The Florida subspecies of burrowing owl is one of the most threatened. These tiny little owls nest in burrows in the ground, sometimes that they dig themselves, sometimes that they'll take over from animals like gopher tortoises, and they normally live in these big wide open prairies. And before there was a lot of development in Florida, the numbers of burrowing owls were very, very high. With development and the shrinking of the Florida prairies, Burrowing owls have had to find these open areas created by man in these urban environments in places like the palm beaches. Unlike other owls, in which the female is normally a third bigger than the males, with burrowing owls, the males and the females are a very similar size with no discernible difference between the two genders. So awesome to have these special little birds living right in this urban environment in the palm beaches.